G'day, it's Dan here. Today we're going to be covering compressors. I'm going to cover some basics and later in some other tutorials I'm going to get a little bit more advanced. So what is a compressor? A compressor is a tool which we use to control the dynamic range of an audio track and more than that a compressor can also be used as an effect. Used as a dynamic tool, it can round off the edges of a performance to make it appear less erratic and help tighten it up so that it sits well in the mix. Used as an effect, it can tonally shape a sound. It can crush it, it can make it gritty, or it can make a track breathe or pump in time with the music. The line between using a compressor as a dynamic tool and as an effect is generally a question of personal taste, but I would broadly define the difference as being that the moment when you can hear the compression happening, it has become an effects unit rather than a dynamic tool. Some compressors can also function as limiters. Limiters generally work on a higher ratio and a higher threshold. The crossover point at which we transition from compressing to limiting a sound is generally considered to be a 10 to 1 ratio and up. We're only going to cover compression in this tutorial, but you will hopefully grasp the concept of limiting by understanding that the functions of a compressor are similar, but are working in a much more aggressive fashion when we apply limiting. Whether you are using compression for effect or as a tool, knowing the underlying basic principles that dictate how the compressor sees your audio is essential. Using inappropriate settings will result in audio that is flat, lifeless, muffled or small. On the other hand, using the appropriate settings will breathe life into a track, make it groove, make it seem large, fatter sounding and more controlled. In a nutshell, the compressor's basic main function is to turn down the audio and turn it back up again. That's it. So if you want to make something sound bigger, why would you put something like a compressor over it, which will consequently turn it down and make it quieter? Well, it's the difference between all these settings and how they interact with one another which determines the outcome. Not every instrument or music style will call for a compressor, but a lot of music will benefit at least from some light compression. There are three main areas where compression generally occurs during tracking, that is the recording of instruments, mixing and mastering. If you really know what sound you're going for in tracking, whether it's for a particular vibe or an atmosphere, using compression liberally can be a nice thing. Generally speaking though, you would not use high ratios of compression during tracking in order to keep your options open for the mixing stage. Once it's part of the sound, it's very difficult to remove it. Mixing is where you can experiment with higher amounts of compression to shape your mix, but in relation to mastering, if your mix is slammed or squashed too much, the mastering engineer will not have a lot of control. Consequently, the mastering engineer may even slam it harder than you'd like, and it could potentially come out sounding crushed or brittle, and it won't sound as nice, or it could come back to you sounding untouched. Just like tracking, once it's on there, you cannot remove it unless you go back and remix the track. We will shortly look at the features of compressors, but before we do, it is worth noting at this point that compression does not add, but in fact multiplies throughout every one of these stages. So for example, if whilst tracking you compress a bass guitar at a 3 to 1 ratio, and then in mixing you add another stage of compression, say 2 to 1, and then the mastering engineer maximises the volume by compressing the entire track a further 4 to 1 ratio. How much compression is applied to the bass guitar by this stage? You may be surprised. If you answered 9 to 1, you would actually be mistaken. Due to the fact that compression multiplies at every one of these stages, the bass guitar is now compressed at 3 by 2 by 4, giving us a whopping 24 to 1 ratio of compression, which is well into the limiting range. Keep this in mind during your tracking and mixing. Smaller ratios can definitely go a long way. Let's take a closer look at all of the controls, but let's imagine for a moment that the compressor is not some mysterious device, but instead I want you to think of the compressor as a person standing over a large mixing desk with their finger on one of the faders for the instrument you are compressing. The attack is essentially the time it takes our person to pull down the level on the fader when a sound gets too loud. The ratio determines how far or to which point the person pulls down the fader. The release is the time it takes our person to push the fader back up to where it began. The threshold is how sensitive our person can hear. The highest threshold setting means that our person is essentially deaf or oblivious to any audio and does not make any fader movements. 
The lowest threshold setting gives our person superhuman hearing and makes them sensitive to even the quietest of sounds. The knee can range from hard to soft. A hard knee will essentially not make any changes. However, as we soften the knee, it starts to function a bit like a look ahead feature where our person begins to anticipate incoming audio before he or she is fully sensitive to it or detects it as being too loud. They then ease the fader down around the threshold point instead of sharply bringing it down once it crosses the threshold, which in that case would be a hard knee. This gives the impression of smoothing the compression by making it less obvious. Generally, transient sounds call for a hard knee, whilst more sustained sounds will use a softer knee. But this is only a guide. By raising the gain, our person is now listening to the track louder, but will react in a similar fashion as if the track was at the original volume. In other words, the person will still pull down the fader the same amount, but this is offset by the amount of gain added to the channel. The ratio stands for how much the signal is turned down after the sound crosses the threshold. For instance, if you have a ratio setting of 2 to 1, the signal will be divided by the first number, the 2, for every 1 decibel that is above the threshold. With 1 decibel of sound going over the threshold on a 2 to 1 ratio compressor, the signal is divided by 2, which is the same as halving it. Consequently, it drops down by half a dB to 0.5 decibels. At 10 to 1, a signal which is above the threshold by 1 decibel will be divided by 10, leaving just 0.1 of a decibel after the compression kicks in. Every different compressor has a unique way of doing these functions, such as the arc or curves of the attack and release, the detection or sensitivity to certain frequencies, hysteresis to name but a few. Ultimately, the only way to tell the difference is by using our ears and deciding which one is right for our intended purpose. Learning the subtleties of each compressor will only come with experience and time, but there is a way to expose some of these features and hear the effects they are having on your chosen track. Start out with the following sequence of settings. Begin with a sensitive or low threshold, ratio turned up to maximum, and a fast release. Whilst playing a repeated passage, adjust the attack control back and forth and notice how the commencement of each sound changes. This will enable us to hear only the way the attack part of the compressor is working on the sound. Aim for the slowest attack setting possible before you start losing the desired impact of the sound. Using a faster attack setting beyond this point will make the compression more apparent and will turn down the sound quicker at the beginning, removing some of the attack portion of the audio. As a general note, the more bass information in the audio, the longer the waveform will be and therefore the slower the attack will need to be to capture enough of that longer waveform. The more high pitched the sound, the faster you will be able to have the attack. Once you are happy with the attack, move on to the release control. Aim for the slowest release setting possible as you are looking for a sound which is released in a musical fashion in time with the other instruments, or the pulse. The groove of the music is affected by this setting and so you want the compressor to release or turn back up the volume in a pleasing way that works with the music.
a faster release is more akin to a sound that will bounce back at you much earlier and in a way that is much more obvious to the ear, sometimes described as pumping or breathing, and thus using the compressor more like an effects unit than a dynamic tool. Depending on your application, you should aim for the most musically appropriate release time. Moving on to the ratio control, start pulling back the ratio until you find the sweet spot setting which sounds the best to your ears for the type of music you are compressing. What you are looking for is the nicest tonal characteristics of the sound, as well as the most appropriate balance between a controlled, smaller sound, higher ratio, versus an uncontrolled, bigger sound, lower ratio. If in doubt, use smaller ratios. A little compression can go a long way. Using the compressor as a tool, I would advise using the setting which works best with the attack and release settings you chose previously, and also using the smallest setting you can bear, so that the sound is controlled enough but not overly squashed. If on the other hand you are using the compression as an effect, then up the ratio to your heart's content, but beware of the risk of introducing distortion, especially in the low end, when you go too far. Next, we set the threshold. This also comes down to your intended use for the compression. For example, a vocal with both quiet and loud dynamic aspects could sound better by only knocking off the tops of the loudest parts of the sound, whilst leaving the quieter parts to remain untouched by the compressor. Having the threshold set too low will make the compressor overly sensitive to both the quiet and loud parts of the audio, whereas having it set too high could make the compressor too insensitive to the loud parts of the audio. It's all about finding the position where the audio is only being compressed as much as it needs to be. On the other hand, a lower threshold can also sound good in conjunction with some added gain to the signal to bring up some of the body of the sound with it. Once you've set the threshold, there shouldn't be any need to go back and change the other settings again, as these should be a good starting point. If you find yourself changing the other parameters, then consider repeating the process, beginning again with the attack, then release, ratio and threshold, as I've just covered, until you become familiar with their every nuance. As you grow your understanding of your compressor of choice, you won't need to follow this process, but this can be a very handy tool for teaching the effects of each parameter, or for sussing out a new or unfamiliar compressor. When you are happy with the results, it's a good idea to match the amount of gain reduction with a complementary boost of about the same using the gain control. We have effectively ironed out the creases of the sound, smoothing it out, but we've also made it a bit softer. Adding back that loss gain will not only bring it back to a good level, but it also serves as an objective way of checking whether we have improved the sound or not. This concludes the basic tutorial on compression. In the coming weeks, look out for other tutorials on more advanced applications of compression. We'll take a look at side chaining, parallel compression, serial compression, pre-compression, as well as multiband compression. If you have any questions or comments, please email me at yamahadrums2009 at hotmail.com. You can also check out my SoundCloud at www.soundcloud.com forward slash yamahadrums2009. And please subscribe for further video updates. Thanks for watching and happy mixing.